trail. How do you answer that charge that Senator Sanders has made that you're in the pocket of Wall Street or beholden to their interests? Well, look, anybody who knows me knows I'm not in the pocket of anyone, and anyone who thinks they can influence me uh, certainly doesn't know me. When you think of Hillary, think of our real slogan, buy one, get one free. You tell a story that to me illustrates what has happened to our political system in regard to the middle class, in regard to democracy and the country as a whole, and it involves Hillary Clinton. I had written an op-ed about a piece of pending bankruptcy legislation. Um, uh, the credit card companies have been pushing to try to tighten the bankruptcy laws, uh, sort of like locking the doors to the hospitals and then claiming nobody's sick in America. Um, so they were trying to get the bankruptcy laws constrained, constricted, so that fewer families could get in. Why? Because you can make more money if those families don't go into bankruptcy, if you're a, a credit lender. And so I'd written an op-ed about how this would fall disproportionately hard on women who were raising families and who would be put in the position under this bill of trying to compete with Citibank, MasterCard, Visa, Bank One, for getting alimony and child support from their ex-husbands. Mrs. Clinton evidently saw... The First Lady. The did. First Lady. She was then First Lady. This is in the 1990s, uh, late 1990s. Mrs. Clinton saw the piece, and I got a call from the White House. And they said Mrs. Clinton was going to be in town to give a speech in Boston, and would I come and meet with her? I said, sure. And so I put together all my files, I show up at the appointed place. After she's finished her speech, we're ushered into a tiny little room somewhere in the bowels of this hotel. And just the two of us, they close the door. Mrs. Clinton sits down. We have hamburgers and French fries. And you tutor her. Mrs. Clinton stood up. She said, let's get our picture taken, which we did. And she said, Professor Warren, we've got to stop that awful bill, referring to this bankruptcy bill that's sponsored by the credit card companies. So. 
I left, she went back to Washington, and I heard later from someone who was a White House staffer that there were skid marks in the hallways when Mrs. Clinton got back as people were reverse direction on that bankruptcy bill. President, they were supporting the industry, and because of her... Uh, President refusing. Clinton had been showing that this was another way that he could be helpful to business. It wasn't a very high visibility bill. And when Mrs. Clinton came back with a little better understanding of how it all worked, they reversed course, and they reversed course fast. And indeed, the, the proof is in the pudding. The last uh, bill that came before President Clinton was that bankruptcy bill that was passed by the House and the Senate in 2000, and he vetoed it. And in her autobiography, Mrs. Clinton took credit for that veto, and she rightly should. She turned around a whole administration on the subject of bankruptcy. And she got then, it. And then? One of the first bills that came up after she was Senator Clinton was the bankruptcy bill. Uh, this is a bill that's like a vampire. It will not die, right? There's a lot of money behind it. And the it bill just, her husband had vetoed. Her husband had vetoed it very much at her urging. And? She voted in favor of it. Why? As Senator Clinton, the pressures are very different. Mm -hmm. It's a well-financed industry. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize that the industry that gave the most money to Washington over the past few years was not the oil industry, was not pharmaceuticals, it was consumer credit products. Those are the people, the credit card companies have been giving money and they're, they have influence. And Mrs. Clinton was one of them, as Senator. Yeah. She, she has taken money from the groups and more to the point, she worries about them as a constituency. So what does this mean though to these people, these millions of people out there whom the politicians uh, cavort in front of as favoring the middle class and then are beholden to the powerful interests that undermine the middle class? What does it say about politics today? You know, this is the scary part about democracy today. It's, we're talking again about the impact of money. The credit industry on this bankruptcy bill has spent tens of millions of dollars lobbying and as their profits grow they just throw more into lobbying for how they can get laws that will make it easier and easier and easier to drain money out of the out of the pockets of middle-class families. People have uh, accused Ambassador Rice and the administration of you know misleading Americans. I can say trying to be in the middle of this and understanding what was going on nothing could be further from the truth. Was information developing? Was the situation fluid? Would we reach conclusions later that weren't reached initially? And, and I but, appreciate that. Madam Secretary, do you disagree with me that a simple phone call to those evacuees to determine what happened wouldn't have, wouldn't have ascertained immediately that there was no protest? I mean, that, that, was, that was a piece of information that could have been easily, easily obtained. Well, but, but Senator, within, again, within hours, if not days. Senator, I, you know, when you're in these positions, the last thing you want to do is interfere with any other process well, that's, going I, I, I realize, on, number one. I realize that's, number I realize two, that's a good excuse. Number two, but, at, well, no, it's the fact. Number two, I would recommend highly you read both what the ARB said about it and the classified ARB because even today there are questions being raised. Now, we have no doubt they were terrorists, they were militants, they attacked us, they killed our people. But what was going on and why they were doing what they were doing? No, 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 no. Is still, I, 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 is still again, again, we no. were misled that there were supposedly protests and then something sprang out of that, an assault sprang out of that, and that was easily but ascertained I, that that was not the fact. But, but and the American know, people could have known that within days, and, and they they didn't know that. With all due respect. The fact is, we had four dead Americans. Was it I because understand. of a protest, or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? From my perspective, less important today, looking backwards, as to why these militants decided they did it than to find them and bring them to justice, and then maybe we'll figure out what was going on in the meantime.